Welcome back to the table, everyone. It is now time to finally get out the commands and colors and play commands and colors Napoleonics. I was happy to, I picked this up a while ago, right? We did an unboxing on this and I'm actually really excited to actually get it to the table and play. I've been playing a lot of other stuff I want to get back to. Someone had sent me an email and they had asked one time, they said, hey, you know, you got a lot of games, I got a lot of games. How do you decide what to play and, you know, make time to fit it all in? I, well, one, I never have enough time to fit it all in, but sometimes you just, just got to grab something and play it. And I did set this up once before and kind of played just to kind of practice it out. The game itself doesn't seem all that complicated. Oh, I better not flip this upside down to look at the back. It'll lose all the pieces. But, um, you know, I've watched some tutorials online. The basic mechanics are just that. They're not, not difficult at all. And... Oop, I'm knocking other stuff over. And I don't think it'll be difficult to play. I've played Memoir 44 with my son quite a bit, so I'm kind of familiar with the whole, you know, your, your command cards and issue orders with the cards. But this has some things on it all its own, such as uh, the rules for putting people in square and some things like that. Like um, if your infantry are next to leadership, they ignore a, a wound before they get pushed back. You know, there's there's some things specific to Napoleonics I'll have to remember, try to remember. Let's see, why do I got these out? Don't know why those fell out. So we're gonna set this up. So that's what this video is. It's just setting up, having a conversation while I set the game up, and then we'll hop in and play. So just kind of consider this the maybe the hobby update video. Uh, so a couple things is first of all which scenario where'd my scenario book go oh it's right here i figured what i would do is do like everybody in the world and we'll just start with uh scenario one rolika rolika maybe french first position 17 august plus since my birthday is 16 august that sounds good to me i won't read the historical background here but I just need the, the little map out so I can figure out where to put stuff and where to put the troops. But we'll start with scenario one. And then as we move along in the scenario and we actually play, as always, don't hesitate to tell me what I got wrong. What's cool is, I, I don't think I ever have to tell people that. I think people are quite happy to tell me when I do things wrong. I've noticed that's the thing. I like going to other people's channels and, and watching and um, there never seems to be a limit to people saying, hey, here's what you got wrong. But I actually like that because I want to know how to play the game properly. You know, if I ever sit down and play somebody else, it's nice if we're all playing from a common set of rules. And this board is a little bit bigger than I thought, so I'm trying to flatten this out so I can get it to fit on the table. So yeah, if ever you see something wrong or have recommendations, don't ever hesitate to leave that in the comments because either A, that's going to help someone else learn, B, it's going to help me learn, and then hopefully it's more enjoyable. Because uh, if you're a big fan of a game and you watch someone else play it and you clearly see that they're mucking it up, that can ruin your enjoyment because now you're worried about, you know, why is this guy getting it wrong? So I want to try and get it right. All right. So I'm not sure where I want to put all this paperwork without having it fall all over. Okay, so first things first, we're going to set these little terrain tiles up. And I'd say this is the only thing I really don't like about the game. On uh, Steam, if you do Tabletop Simulator, I think they've got... I downloaded this once and looked at it to, to play with it, it I think. Um, it actually includes pre-setup maps. I mean, obviously you get to set up yourself with the tabletop simulator, but I think it's kind of cool that I think some of the scenarios come pre-set up, so I like that. I almost wish if I had money, what well, would be cool, because I thought I saw someone else do this. Like, they took the map board and printed out larger maps, but then they also had like pre-made with the tiles or something. I don't know. It cut down on setup if you could have some of this stuff pre-done for you. Because this for me was like the, the hardest part is putting all these little tiles out. 
So yeah, I'll let you watch me do that. So yay, welcome. So here we go. All right, now this is Napoleonics. And in the unboxing video, I was talking about how I was happy to get this to play because I like Napoleonics, but I am not an expert at Napoleonics. Like I have very limited knowledge. I have a friend that we do some, I did I do some tabletop gaming with, miniature gaming, and he is a huge fan of Napoleonics, and he's got quite a collection of, of soldiers. And the, I think the thing that holds me back, it's not so much the idea that you have to have like a lot of miniatures to make this happen, because you know, you're talking thousands and thousands. That happens on any period of gaming that you do that has a significant amount of uh, people, you know, ancients, things like that. Lots and lots of, of potentially that you got to, you know, figures you have to paint, collect, store. But with Napoleonics, one of the challenges is knowing what to collect. You know, you have to, you actually have some decisions to make. The same thing, I guess, if you play like Flames of War or, you know, just about any miniatures game is one, is there a particular faction you're going to play? Um, you know, is there, because like with Napoleonics, you have a lot of, there's minor principalities, kingdoms, nations, uh, and then even within that, each of those have their own uniforms, infantry might dress a certain way, cavalry might dress a certain way, and then you might have, you know, different cavalry regiments have maybe certain markings or things that they wear to differentiate them. So it's like you have to be very specific. And what I've seen is with Napoleonics, it feels like that one you need to be very, very careful and respectful of. And I'm fine with that. It's just um, what I mean by that is people will really notice if you get it wrong. You know, like they know they know that a particular jacket of a particular regiment had to have a certain amount of buttons in just a, a certain way and if you get the buttons on the jacket wrong you've messed it up you know it's like oh that's not the seventh regiment you've got the fifth regiment and when you play historical scenarios in uh, napoleonic warfare you're playing certain you know you are you're replicating certain battles that had certain regiments and things like that I'm probably getting some of the incorrect tiles here, but it looks close enough. So it just it was just interesting to me how specific Napoleonics can be. Then that even depends on the rule set you're using. Like um, the rule set I'm playing with my friend, I really, really like. It's Napoleon's Battles. And so far, um, I've only played two rule sets. I've looked at other ones. Uh, another one is called ESR, which has some interesting concepts as well. But the, um, where is this city going to go? Right there, Rolica. Um, Napoleon's Battles, I, I like that for several reasons. And I, I might share that here in a minute. I probably will just to talk and pass time. But um, the way they do orders of battle, because with that one you play scenarios. I haven't really seen anything for that for making pickup games where you and the person you're playing with or your opponent does that look right? kind of bends, bends up, bends back around but with Napoleon's battles I didn't see anything that looked like uh, a point system rosters for you to just say okay I'm gonna take some regiments of you know French and or British or anything like that it was very much a scenario driven game system which is cool I don't mind that because right now what I'm playing with my friend is we're playing uh, quat Quatre Bras which I might be saying that wrong but that's a pretty famous battle and there's a lot of information on what units fought in that divisions things like that and so with Napoleon's battles that's how it's played is with scenarios and then in those scenarios you have um, like tags that you put on your limits because or on your units these tags that you can cut out and that tells you what division what brigade that was what type of troop it was so it is very very specific 
And I bring that up because my friend was like, yeah, let's play Quattro Bra, but I have to finish painting my Nassau, Nassau troops. Because of course me, I was like, oh cool. I didn't know that the, um, you know, that the Caribbean was involved. And he was like, no, you dummy. That's the, there's a principality like in Germany or something like that, the Nassau. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, well, you learn something every day. But that, that's the thing with Napoleonic Gaming is it's got a lot of deep history. So like he wouldn't even play Quattro Bra until he had painted very specific regiments for the Nassau troops. Okay, that that's great. I, on the other hand, I would be much more generic than that. You know, I don't need them painted. You know, if I've got figures, let me just lay them out and let's play. One, two, three, four, five, six hills. Now, I will admit though, having all those units painted up and specific to their historical units looks really cool on the table, but you have to take the time to set that up and paint it and whatnot, store it. And luckily he does. He's semi-retired and um, he's more than happy to stay at home and paint and he's got troops. In fact, he gave me some miniatures because he has a closet, just a closet down in his office that he opened it up and it was floor to ceiling with boxes of the um, figures from a company called like Hat and uh, some other companies. It's just all Napoleonic's figures. And he says he's had them for years. And I knew he had them for years. I'm missing some city tiles here. He had them for years because the cost on some of the boxes where it had the receipt, or not the receipt, but yeah, it had the price tag on it. It was like $3 for a box of these plastic soldiers. And I knew, I was like, okay, I know plastic troops are cheap, but when I went to go price stuff, a box of like 50 soldiers could still be as cheap, as cheap as like 20 bucks. So when he's got stuff that says, you know, three dollars, four dollars, yeah, he's been collecting for a while. But he said to me he had more soldiers than he would ever be able to paint and mount and play with. So he was, you know, he gave me some. I thought, well, that's cool. However, I tried to tell him painting is not my thing. So I do struggle with that. I would love uh, if somebody came out with like a pre-painted line of figures for Napoleonics, that would be cool. And so, like I said in my unboxing video, that was actually one reason that I really got into the um, Napoleonics here for the commands and colors. I was excited for that because this gives me figures I don't have to paint. I know that seems kind of maybe cheap, but I was like, hey, I can play Napoleonics, I can do these battles, and um, yeah, I don't have to paint and store thousands of figures. I got lots of blocks that I have to store and do something with, but that's cool. Give me the blocks any day. But yeah, if somebody, and what I mean by pre-painted, there's some games that offer pre-painted figures, you know. Um, I have a friend that used to play Hero Clicks. If you're not familiar with that, it's uh, you have these little pre-painted figures. They're kind of cheap. They're not expensive, but they have a. It's a miniatures game, but all the stats are on the base that the figure stands on, and you can rotate the base to show different numbers of like health and movement. And as the little figure takes damage, you rotate the base, and then it will say like how many hit points you have left. And based on your damage you've taken, here's what your new attack values are. I could see pre-painted figures for something here like this for Napoleonics Gaming. I think that'd be great. Okay, I think that's all the terrain here. I think what I'm using for the cities are just ever so slightly than what's on the picture here, but that shouldn't matter too much. So now we can go ahead and start pulling out troops. I'm going to try not to muck the map up. So yeah, I don't know if you've seen this before. I thought I shared this. I made a custom insert. I put low walls on the top. So I've got, yeah, I know. I Yeah, I did show this. I had to have. I put um, the walls on here low. That way it was a little bit easier to reach in and grab the blocks. And then 
um, you know, three rows for all the infantry. And then I got these little finger cutouts. And then here, this middle section was to store all of these terrain parts. And then underneath, I have dice, the large block. So we've got the artillery, horses will come get in a little bit, and card storage. So this isn't the best insert I've made, but um, the time that I did play this, it worked out really good for getting all this stuff out. Uh, let's see. So now it's just a matter of putting all these people out. All the French, who's on top? Who's Who likes it on top? That's the French are on top with the Portuguese. And then we've got the uh, French down below. Okay, we can do that. I almost wish these were on separate pages. I hate folding the book over here. Okay, so we got Portuguese lines. That's the brown blocks. I'm gonna have to look. There's a couple of these that require like five blocks. Some of these are four blocks, so I'll have to look and make sure I get it. But right now, that's that's a militia, but it's a line. Yeah, see, that's the thing with the the miniatures is like take the Portuguese, right? There was a line. There's a militia, but then it's like the different regiments of line might need to be painted a certain way. So you're very stuck into what you're doing if you're doing historical simulations, right? It's like anything, you know, you're. If you're going to play certain regiments of World War II and you have German troops that you're going to play, you're going to try and paint them as close as possible. Luckily, I think World War II gaming has enough kind of generic rule sets that you could probably get away without being super specific. You know, you just, like I've got a bunch of stuff here for American Airborne. I just kind of painted them a, a Airborne kind of colorish and whatnot, but not a specific unit. Not that there was a whole lot of airborne units, but I think World War II you can be a little more generic with than Napoleonics. Now I will say this though, since I don't know any better, my friend could have just handed me completely incorrect stuff. Oh, these are Portuguese light. Yeah, I would have never known that he was handing me incorrect units. Like I'm not that knowledgeable. But I, like I said, I just have a feeling that um, if you play Napoleonics with someone who really knows their history, they're going to know that you've got the wrong, wrong colors and whatnot. Yeah, so it's hard to get into Napoleonics unless you find generic rule set. Now I have, so I like Napoleon's battles, but that's definitely a simulationist. What's cool is though, it does come, if you buy the base game, you can still find it. But it actually comes with generic uh, cutout counters. And those, are, they have like blue and green or something like that. So you can play like generically play German or uh, Russians and like French. And this is a cutout counter. And that, for whatever reason, seems to be okay. But by golly, as soon as you want to pull out miniatures, you better get those miniatures right. Okay, let's grab some British line here. I gotta find the lines. Yeah, see, even here there's guard, line, militia, light, guard, battalion. What was this, a guard? Yeah, guard, grenadier. Yeah, so your Napoleonics gets deep. And you figure that's per country, and then every country has their own color schemes. And oh, that's a lot to manage if you want to get simulationist. Okay, I'm looking for some British line. Here's a line. I gotta get four of these. I just need to find a way to organize these better so I can quickly find what I'm looking for. So here's four line. But I do kind of like this because, see, these are line. But what I could do is actually I could use these. I'm going to try using these with Napoleon's battles as my miniatures because it does say line. And, you know, at that point, it really doesn't matter too much because you're going to have a specific unit tag that you assign to things and those unit tags have some of the specific stats like their morale and um, things like that and your leadership bonuses for commanders here's some more line troops so I thought I could use these as replacements for miniatures I've even thought about getting a board game there's one I want to get called I think it's Eagle, Eagles of the Empire I think that's what it is um, I know Compass Games put out a version. They had like a, a Spanish. I think, I think, it, it's, I think, 
Eagles of the Empire is like one of those games where several companies have put out their game using their rule set for that. And uh, I think it looks great. It has like these long counters to represent your column or your, uh, like your, when you're, when they're deployed in line formation, it's got these long columns and the map isn't hexes. The map uses area. I think light had five, but I'll have to go back and check. So for now, you just get four and you're at the river bend. We'll grab some artillery in a minute. We'll grab the light cav, the other artillery that's down below. So I need eight more line. Lots more line infantry. One, two. And for Napoleon's battles, I think this base box actually has enough blocks. Because with Napoleon's battles, a lot of your formations are four. You know, when you have their bases, it's like four bases for a brigade. Some of the larger ones might have six. So I think this actually has enough blocks in the base game that you could play scenarios out of Napoleon's battle. Yeah, I did look at some other rule sets. There's some, like, um, I really thought about buying Blucher, Blucher by Sam Mustafa because that one you can use miniatures or it comes with these uh, playing cards that have the division and information on the playing cards and you put the playing cards on the table. So you can use those cards for like play, doing blind movement because you flip it over, it's the nationality flag and then you flip it, it has all the combat stats. And then I know some people, they, they get miniatures and they kind of replace that card block and they just keep the unit stat line on their miniature base. So it's a game that can be played with miniatures or these cards. And I thought about that, I might just get into that because then, then I'm not worrying about blocks or anything, just lay out my cards. It's a higher level game. I kind of like the tactical, uh, believe it or not, some people say this is tactical level. Not specifically commands and colors because you're not really managing columns and you do have squares but you're not doing like attack columns and march columns and putting them in line. But I do, that's one reason I like Napoleon's Battles is I kind of like that idea of saying, okay, um, I want to put these guys in column. Okay, now I got to get the French. I like that. I thought that was kind of cool. All right, so here's some French line. Oh, I think I know what happened. I left some, well, I don't know. I think I misstickered a couple of these. I think these are my misstickered blocks, so I'm just going to set them aside. I know how dare you miss sticker, but I did. But I am ready to buy the next, I want to get my Austrian box. Do you want to do, I want to get all, I love this. I've only played the game once just to try and try it out and I know I didn't play it correctly, but I really love the concept and I really like the blocks. But, uh, yeah, there's a line, two line. Okay, gotta get some light. Light could be, I guess, your skirmishers or riflers. They usually have a little bit better armory, a little bit freer to move about the board. So there's light. I'm gonna have to move this box so I can get to the map here. Ah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, but I was looking at some of the other rule sets that actually have, um, there was a lot of, like La Batille, I was trying to think of it, but, but it had table organizations where you could say, okay, I just want like a generic French division, and a French division is made up of this, and then it didn't matter, like, since you weren't doing a historical scenario, you could label it whatever you want, like, oh, this is my third Dragoons, or my fourth chasseurs or something like that. So I think I might want a rule set like that. Something where I can use these blocks and plug it into a division builder, an army builder of some sort. This militia is going to go back here. And then this line goes here. So that's a light line line. Grab some more light. Two. And then I'll have to go back and make sure that uh, all these folks have the correct amount of blocks in it. Uh, line, line. Yeah, I've got the box on camera so you can't see me thumbing through here to find everything we need. Light, light, light. Oh, move them over. Then we have another line. One, two, three. So yeah, if you have 
any Napoleonics miniatures or board games that you enjoy playing, let me know. Let me know what you think of this one if you've played Commands and Colors before. I know Commands and Colors is very generic uh, in sense of tactics and things like that. Like, I get it. This isn't a simulation like you would have with, say, you know, Napoleon's Battles or something like that. I get it. But, like I said, for table space and not having to paint lots of miniatures, this for me is just kind of a fun alternative. So I can say, yeah, I'm playing some Napoleonics. Unless you're giving away your Napoleonics miniature collection. Now, if you're doing that, definitely let me know because I will take those miniatures off your hand in a heartbeat so I can help you out. Okay, I gotta take this top layer off now. All these blocks are sliding all over, but I'm gonna take this out and now I can get the cavalry and the leaders and we're gonna pull the dice. Set the dice out. Now, when I play this, just remember, nobody label this as a tutorial. When I actually get to play in, this is just me trying to learn. Okay, so I gotta find my Portuguese light cavalry. Ah, uh, there's, that's a heavy. Here's a light cavalry. Oh uh, yeah, but I don't know how many blocks go in it. Okay. Guess we can look that up right now. I think what I'll do, I'm looking at the time, 26 minutes? Okay, I'll keep your attention for just a couple more minutes here. And then I'll finish setting up. I figure I was giving myself 30 minutes to mumble through things while I set this up. But one important aspect of the game, if you find it, is you've got your army card. Oh yeah, here was something. I don't know if I showed you these. I printed these out. I thought this was great. I found this on Board Game Geek. So here you have Portugal. This tells you the unit type, how many blocks it has, what its movement, so like it can move one in attack, or it can move one attack, or move two, but no attack. Uh, there's the range, um, what the hits do, like you get one die per block, or if you fire and move, because you can move one in attack with them, so then it, but it's half the number of of uh, dice rounded down. So I'm gonna use these to finish setting up and make sure I have enough stuff. But yeah, these cards are awesome and I forgot that I had printed those out. Because the cards that come with the game are perfectly, perfectly serviceable. I just don't think they're laid out as user friendly. They're they're fine. I mean, here's all the Portugal, Portuguese stuff right here. Same thing, blocks. I just thought this had a better visual appeal. And they also had one, so maybe this would be the last thing I show you because we're right about that 30 minute mark. Yeah, they had one for the Russians. There was one that I thought that he had, that the person made, but it was like a work in progress. Maybe not. So there's British. Someone's even got one for the Russians. Oh, I know what it was, is some of these icons were still just the person silhouette instead of the block picture yeah so that's no big deal but yeah they even got the Russians for you uh, yeah they didn't have Austria so that's fine but yeah I want to get the Russians next um, I want to I want to get them all <laughs> so I don't know I thought about getting Austria next but my son really likes the Russians so maybe I'll get Russians next and then do France against Russia kind of stuff just to get my son to play Although he'd probably play Austrians too, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm gonna finish setting this up and then when we come back, we'll go ahead and start playing the game and see how that looks. So thank you very much. But yeah, please share some thoughts that you have on Napoleonic rule sets that you like. Maybe if you got suggestions for kind of a tactical level where you get to worry about columns and the formations. I liked the opposed dice roll mechanic in Napoleon's Battles. So if you have games with similar kind of mechanics, I know Blucher... I can't see you, but I'm running mic up. Oh, my wife's pinging me. Um, but um, I just lost train of thought. She Skyped me for a second. But anyway, yeah, let me know what games you play, and I'll see you when we come back. Welcome back to the table. It's our inaugural Commands and Colors Napoleonics um, Simple Edition. I just coined that. 
I'll explain to you what we're doing here with the Commands and Colors Napoleonics. But for those who like to share drinks, this is that green apple I was talking about, the Jolly Rancher green apple. Um, it's atrocious. But I've got about four more, three more packets of it. It is oddly addicting. So the more I drink it, the more I get used to it. Kind of like beer, you know? First time you had it, it's like, ugh. At least for me and then after a while you have 10 or so and then two hours later you're like yeah this is the best stuff ever I kind of feel like this with that so anyway got the Jolly Green Apple Ranch stuff now what makes this Napoleonics simple well first of all what I did for simplicity was I pulled out these cards these are the cards that have a lot of cool stuff that as a solo player I said to myself you know what let's learn the game then we'll add those in all right just to simplify things because some of these cards have things that affect other cards in your hand and right now my solo player has no cards in his hand and I'll tell you how we're gonna do the solo play so I took those out now once I have the game mastered in about a year from now I'll be happy to put these back in um, if I'm playing face to face I'll put them in and then my opponent and I can argue exactly how they work so for now, I'm just setting those off to the side. Now I'm going to set them over here. So what I have here is the rest of the cards. And these are all the standard, you know, um, assaults and all that stuff. Just found cotton for when they fire. Ooh, I didn't even think of that. Fire! Oh, yeah, look at that. That's cool. You can't see it very well, but I, I, had, I don't know where the cotton came from. I was sitting here and the next thing I know there's a cotton ball there and it was like oh well maybe we can put some cotton down when these things fire that would be cool which is great because I've got some cotton right here also I found on the floor I don't know how I got on the floor but I found the cotton that comes with the uh, black sails and it gave a little bit of orange colored cotton for smoke and whatnot and a bunch of white cotton for when the cannons fire but some stuff when ships cap. So I've got cotton for days. So if I remember, I'll put cotton down when stuff fires. I've also changed. Well, okay. So it's simplified. That's mostly it. Is I just took out some of those cards. Also, some of the leader effects. I'll probably forget. I've got the rule book handy. The thing is, I've read the rule book. I've gotten to the point where I've read the book that when I look at it, I just begin to confuse myself. And so I'm at that point of learning a game where you just have to start playing it. And then as questions come up, hit the rule book, right? Or have you all tell me what I'm doing wrong when I have questions. You can help me out. But I've hit that point where I understand that attached leaders can help reduce damage. Um, you can form a square when the cavalry is about to attack infantry. Like, I get it. Like, I know that stuff is there. But how to appropriately apply it? Those are the things that will take time. Um, so that's why this is going to be Napoleonic's light. I'm going to just slowly add to my knowledge base as I play. All right, so I've got my five cards for the French. The British move first in this scenario. This scenario, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but after landing unopposed at Mondego, Mondego Bay, Sir Arthur... Wellesley led a Portuguese British ar army of some 15,000 men south towards Lisbon. Opposing him was General Hon Henri? Henri de la Borde, with a force consisting, I don't know if the French roller are, but you know, General Henri de la Borde, with a force consisting of only some 5,000 infantry, 500 cavalry, and five field pieces. De La Borde resolved to fight a delaying action against Wellesley's advance while awaiting reinforcements. So British are going to move first. Um, the British get six command cards, but here's the thing with the soloness. It's uh, I've read several different ways you could play solo, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a card when it's the British turn. And that's why I took out those more complicated cards. But if I draw a card and if I have no troops in that lane that I can do, I'll just draw a new one for them. And then uh, as a French player, you know, I've got my five laid out. So that kind of gives me a slight advantage. But when I played this way before, the British still fought really well. Um, then there's the special rules. We're supposed to get five 
victory car, uh, five victory banners. The British, if they move south enough, I have over here a banner there the British can capture. Oh, I guess I don't need to make it British yet. They have to get there and capture it. So, And then there's one over here. Because if the British get that far south, that means they flanked the French. So let's flip those to the French side right now. But that's victory points waiting for the British if they can charge south. And then we have the French along the south. Light cavalry, um, some light infantry, line infantry, line infantry. So there's a lot of French line infantry, just a couple lights. And then up here for the British, we have quite a bit. Um, some line troops, horse artillery, some light uh, foot, line, line, uh, this, yeah, line, line. They had a light group. Ah, you know, I did this once before. It's, uh, where's the light group? Oh, it's right here. There's a light group here with five counters. So the light has five. And then finally, for the allies, I guess you call them, there's the Portuguese. Okay, so that's that's the game setup. Last thing is the camera setup. So instead of having the camera set up to where it's overhead, I've brought it down and it is very inconvenient this way. But I brought it down because it made it easier for you to see the, the blocks, right? If I had it overhead, then you don't see anything. If I have it overhead, all you see here, let me try and rotate this thing. Um, it looks like this. You know, and that's not cool at all. So, through some trial and error here, I'm going to try and keep it to where, you know, it's here in front of me, but I can move it around a little bit and you can see the board. Uh, but I have to be careful because, again, the camera's like right here and if I move just right, I completely bump this thing. Um, but, if you can see past the glare here, There's what's on the wall there. There you go. That's just some stuff to look at. And then the rest of the table is just gunk. Yeah, don't don't look at that part. So we're gonna try and keep it here on the board. Alright. So with that in mind, let's get to fighting. And I've got my cards here. All right, I'm a little nervous. Starting a new game is always a little nerve-wracking for me. Uh, plus, I really don't have a good spot to lay all the cards out, but this is what I drew for the British. So they're going to attack in the center. So issue an order to three units or leaders in the center. Oh, I am gonna go grab one little thing that I played with last time. I'll show you what it is here in just a second. Okay, I just spent about 10 minutes trying to find these beads and I forgot that I'd already set them down here specifically to play the game. So, yeah, call that what you will. My wife says that's a senior moment. And I'm like, thanks, honey, I appreciate that. So, there it is. Oh, what do I do use these for? Well, because when I play, I get distracted very easy. Like, I get distracted very, very easily. Um, so, what I like to do is, um, like for the British here, we're going to activate three units, center. And so what I'm going to do is, like I'll say, like I'm going to activate that line, I'll activate that foot artillery, and I'll activate this foot. Now, normally if it's like one, no big deal, but if it gets to be, you know, like three units, Probably not that big a deal either. It's just that sometimes right in the middle of something I get distracted have to look something up and then I'm like which one did I activate? So I'm just gonna have these little markers For those moments and you really only need probably about that three just a handful most of these order cards are for moving like one or two troops but let's look at my French data card here because uh, it was center, yeah, center. I know it's close to the camera, but the camera's down on the table, so it's hard to share. But line infantry can move one and fight. Light can move one and fight or move two. Oh, okay. 
and then line have a range of two. Well, what we're going to do pretty much just to learn is just start activating and moving stuff. The foot artillery, foot artillery um, can move one. They don't get to shoot though, which is fine because what I might do is just move some foot artillery so they're not shooting through the wood. So I'm going to move a foot artillery here. That probably puts it in range of, of the French foot artillery that I have right here. But I'm okay with that for the moment because we'll see how that plays out. And then um, the line, I think I have a terrain chart and I'm curious if there's any problems moving into wood. So I'm looking there. It just says must stop. So into, out, must stop. That's movement effect. So moving into, you have to stop. A unit may not battle the turn it moves onto a forest hex. Light infantry, rifle light infantry, young guard infantry, and other light infantry type units are the exception. So I can move some line in because I was thinking that might give them some protection. So they can move in, they can't shoot. And then this would be the third British. Done. Okay. That British unit has done something. Um, I guess that's my first card done. Okay. Sweet. Then I guess we'll check for the French here. All right, I just had to remind myself. I was like, wait a minute. How, how often do I do this before a turn is over? Actually, that was a turn. It was that simple. You um, pick your card, play your card, activate the units, you move, then you shoot with them, and then you draw a replacement card back up to your hand, and then you're done. That's a turn. And then there was no limit on the amount of turns in scenario. It's just when you have five victory banners. So it's like, oh, okay. Easy. Well, I'm going to pick a card. I'm going to... We're going to attack center as well. So I've got some units here. So I'm going to have the foot artillery. I'm going to check on this light artillery. So I'm going to put a reminder thought there. I mean, it doesn't matter, um, but I'm going to check light because I think those guys have some range. Now I've got my little reminder chart for the infantry. So I'm going to check out the foot artillery first. So foot artillery has a range of five, one, two, three, and it says for the attack dice, if you've got, I guess it's two or more artillery, it does four damage dice, three damage dice, two damage dice, and then one, one. So it can shoot out to five, but out to this range, I'm gonna roll two damage dice because I've got here Oops, so you can see it because I've got um, three artillery. They're going to roll two dice at that range. And we're going to try and hit their foot artillery. Okay, so we're going to roll here. Uh, so I'm going to get the either flags to try and push back or get an actual artillery symbol. So flag to push back, artillery symbol to damage. And I rolled one flag. Now... If I remember right, and this is where, you know, I'm going to have to check the book and stuff like that again, just real quick. Because there was no damage, I think the foot just gets pushed back. It's like they're coming up, they're under fire, they're like, no, let's just wheel these suckers back. I think they only would have taken a damage, for example, if I had also rolled, if I had also rolled the artillery, then they would have taken a damage and pushed back. But I think as it stands... They just get pushed back, but I'm going to double check that. Okay, yeah, I was just a quick reference. So it says after damage is applied, any flag you just push back one. Militia would go back three per flag, but that's not militia. Um, so yeah, I wanted to move up. Was hoping they would hold on to position, but nope, they got pushed back. Now these light guys, even though I marked these British or these French units to do something, I'm not moving them. We're just going to check for, uh, basically, we're just firing. Uh, so now I'll check the light. They're going to shoot at those British in the woods. So it says for light infantry, they only have a range of two. One, two. Okay, so no. 
They could move one and then attack, but then they're, they'd only get two dice. I don't know if I want to risk that. I don't know if I want to risk my light infantry. I think we're kind of defending. So in actuality, I probably did not need to play that activate three in the center. All right, well, this is part of the learning. Um, pay attention to your ranges on cards before you play. I'll look at that next time. So I'm gonna draw my replacement card. I got attack center again. So maybe after the British do their thing, we can attack more. All right, so the British get attack center again. I swear I shuffled these cards before we started, but that's like f four attack centers that I've drawn here in a row. That's crazy. What are the odds of that? Well, that, don't tell me. Well, we're stuck in the center again. Now, again, the line infantry could push, but that's a well-defended British line. So I'm not sure that they want to do that. But we do have some other stuff in the center. Now we've got an attached line unit. Now they can move two. One, two, make themselves a target. And I know when they take some casualties, since there's attached leader, we can check possibly for that. Okay, so they moved up. And only two hexes of shooting, so they can't hit from there. Yeah, even the... Let's see what the British range is. I got these charts, but trying to find the one I want is always a pain. Yeah, just range of two. Although rifle light infantry, I don't have rifle light infantry. I just have light infantry and line infantry, and they both only have two. So we are going to have to push up if we want to start shooting. So I'm going to push a line here so we can start working the flank. And we're going to work here so we can start shooting at the light. Um, so again, might not be the most tactically sound, but by golly, that is what we're going to do. Okay. Now we moved one, so I get to uh, half and round up, it says here. Uh, but that's still just two. So I'm going to start with this line infantry. That line is out of range, and that line is in range. So they're going to get two dice. So this one, we'll start here. They're going to shoot at these light. Um, so it's going to be two dice. And they rolled a cannon and a horse. So that's no hits. So now we're going to check this side. And they're going to shoot at the light infantry here. And that's still two dice, which is two cav. Uh, that, to me, would indicate no hits. So the British push up, fire, but now they've made themselves great targets for the French. We were trying to push, but luckily, remember, this is the fourth one of these attack centers that I've drawn. Now this is going to work out. Now this will be beneficial because we'll have the light infantry will fire. We'll have the foot artillery fire, and then we'll have the, the light there. Back it up so you can see. So light, light, foot. And we're just going to trounce the British line. Now the light guys, the light side, the light side infantry there. Light infantry. I should have this memorized after a while. Yeah, it's just two, but it's going to be... Um, they get one die per character plus one free die. So they're going to roll five dice against the British line. So I've got five dice here. One, two, three, four, five. Five dice. So let's see if we roll some infantry hits. And one infantry hit. So they get one infantry hit, no flags. So that's one dead. And we'll try the foot artillery. We're going to try hitting the line infantry back there because they have an attached leader. So again, that's one, two, three, a range of three. They get two dice. Two dice. And okay, here we go. Roll. 
Oh, that's two infantry. They did. Well, that time, that artillery laid in there. But what we have to do now is check to see uh, if there's a leader casualty. So let me double check on that because that leader was attached. So probably not the best thing to move him up. All right, we just double checked. And yes, that leader is going to make a leader casualty check. They took two casualties, so he makes one roll of two dice. And if I roll two sabers, he's out of there. So he rolled a flag and um, a calf. So he's okay. No sabers. And I, I did. I knew this was going to happen. As I was, as I was reading the rules, I, I saw that there was the situations where uh, flags are applied. So um, if your, your leader is attached, it will basically stop one flag from happening. Um, if you're supported by like two friendly units on attack, you know, next to you, then that will stop it. Uh, guards could, so there's, like I said, little things I know that are there. Just trying to remember all of it though. It's going to take a while to get. Okay. So then we have this French light and they're going to fire into this line and that's going to be five dice because they are four lights and then they get to add plus one so that's five dice in my hand and again two but they're still there still fighting this game's going to go quicker than i thought it would if i keep doing poor choices but i figured the british have to push they got to push and the thing to remember now is i don't think we can shoot through blocks i'm just thinking ahead let me double check that all right yeah and i just double checked we can't shoot through units so i was thinking about this i got artillery that could maybe have a clear line of sight to um, the french line here but i just moved some line infantry up and then this other artillery doesn't have any targets in view so they're going to have to push forward but i'm thinking i'll push the artillery into the woods that'll give them some protection and they can't move and fire anyway. So if I get another activate center, that's probably what we'll do. Okay, so now that was the, yeah, British just, or the French just finished. I did my attack. Uh, now it's the British. British player draws scout left flank. So I, since they're coming at me, I gotta flip it. So that'd be over here is the left flank. So issue an order 20. When drawing a new command card, draw two, choose one, discard the other. Well, that part will probably skip for them. But we do need to move some stuff. It says all of this is fordable. So do I have anything on my chart for fordable rivers? It says normally it's prohibited, but since we can ford it, we have to stop. So we can move into it. And then we stop and then we can move out of it. So it takes time to forward. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and actually move some line up here and we're going to give them some cover. And that's it. They moved. They're done. So British, British player done. Uh, French player, I forgot to draw his one card, but he drew scout center. Okay. That's cool. And then when I refresh, I'll draw two cards for the French player and pick one. Ooh. Now we've got the foot artillery. We'll probably do the foot artillery. Oh, actually, we'll do the light. Yeah, the artillery shoots far, but at this range, the light infantry, I think, will do very well against the line infantry. And they have a range of two. I didn't see, like, any reduction in dice for shooting out to two. It just says you fire but we get to add one because it's light so even though it's out to two we're firing five dice i think i would like to see maybe a reduction in dice at that range but you know is what it is so here we go i got five dice and that time it is two flags and one more infantry hit so one more no attached leaders to worry about and they got to go back two flags, so we'll go, and I don't think that stops it, and they had nobody supporting them, so they're going to go back here. So they fall back. Reasonable to me. 
and that was my scout. So the French are going to draw two and order order a number of units or leaders on the left lane equal to the command. Oh, I can move five. Holy cow. Okay. Or probe in the center. Well, I've only got like one unit on the left flank. So what I'll do is I'm going to toss that one and we'll keep the probe center for when it comes back to the French. And we're back to five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. All right. British player said they could draw two because they had a scout. Um, so which one would I like to do? Do I want to probe on the right? That would bring the Portuguese up or attack on the left. We're going to attack on the left because I've got stuff that I can bring up. So the British are going to do attack on the left flank. That's over here. We've got things to move. Um, it doesn't put us in range of anything, so we can move in. We're protected, but not in range. One, two. So we're safe to move some stuff up. Let's move some stuff up here. Horse artillery. Horse artillery. I'm sure the movement is similar, but let's see. They can move four. Uh, one block. If they have one block, they can't move and fire. Oh, so let's let's look at horse artillery for just a second here. I don't know if you can see that very well. But they can fire and move. So if they have two or more blocks, they can move three hexes and then fire. Oh, I guess it's... Oh, no, then the damage is three, two, one. That's what it would be. So it depends on how close they get. Then it's three, two, one. Whereas if they're stationary and fire, it's three, two, one, one. But it looks like we can move up to four. But as soon as we hit the river, we got to stop. So we go one, two to the river, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, no, that's out of range. So I wanted to move, move them up. So that's two units moved, and we'll move this line unit. So we're going to try and push down. Maybe we can, can hit that flank. All right, and then the French are looking. Well, they don't like what they see coming up on the right-hand side. So they're going to do a probe. Well, nope, 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 we won't. I really don't have much on the side. Most everything I have for the French is in the center. And then they have cavalry that are um, on either flank to maybe charge in and, and repulse some kind of attack. So we'll probably stick to my center attack. So we're going to hit, take one of the French and do a probe center, which is going to be two. Uh, the two I have in mind, then, if I look what the French have, probably going to be these two guys right here. We're going to take out that line. So first we'll fire for the light. That's five dice. Yeah, things aren't looking good for the British there. They tried to move up, but overwhelmingly good firepower from the French. And it's one more infantry dead and a flag. So they get pushed back. I'm surprised I haven't taken a unit out yet. I've taken out one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven blocks, but not enough to eliminate a unit completely yet. All right, now because they pushed back, that actually puts this out of range. And I think they're happy. I mean, they could push forward, but then they would be subject to return fire. So I think the French are happy in a defensive position. So that's, we'll pass on that one. So that's two, two used up. Uh, then the French draw a scout center. Okay, then it goes to the British, and the British are going to do a recon and force. They're going to do a one in each lane, uh, which is fine, because we're going to go ahead, I think, over here on their left flank, my right. They're going to push that line up. There's nobody to shoot, so I'm not going to worry about putting a reminder marker. Then the center, what we're going to do here, 
is um, since they're on the line, they can go center or the left activation. We're going to move them up into the woods, and they can shoot from the woods. Excellent. Yeah, okay. And then I've got light. The light can shoot, I think light is still just shooting two hexes. Uh, but Portuguese light, when they shoot, light infantry, yeah, they get to add one die. So they would be firing four dice. They only have three, um, three units. In each, they have three blocks in each one of their units. So their light infantry is there. They can move two. I mean, they could, you know, I guess maybe at this point we should move up and actually get into some melee. Maybe that's what we need to do. Instead of just trying to move the British up to get into gunnery range, we need to move up into, um, you know, basically combat range. And we can move two. I can move out of the woods. One, two. And then I could have a chance at doing some casualties that way. Uh, so this is what I was thinking. Let's let's go ahead and, and move out of the woods, move over here to the British, and do a, a melee attack. That might be what I got to do, is just charge the British up. So don't worry about moving one to get in gun range, but move fast and get in here. Because see, looking ahead, I've got this light infantry. They could move two, one, two, and then they'd be close enough to battle. Can you move two and then do a melee battle? All right, let me go double check the melee rules. Great. It looks like melee combat is real similar. You're going to roll uh, one die per unit. So I've got three there. So we're going to roll three for the uh, Portuguese. I didn't see anything. I may have missed it, but I didn't see any penalties for attacking uphill. Let me see real quick. Let me double check. I didn't see it. That doesn't mean it's not there. Um, hill. Blocks on sight. Morale effects on defender. Yeah, I don't see anything that says there's a penalty for attacking up. No no effect on moving up or down but it does affect like if you're shooting oh battle effects there it is found it battle effects minus one okay i'm up so it is one okay so we're actually going to roll two dice all right and the only other difference then is um sabers hit too i'm going to roll two dice saber and infantry hit does damage and that's a flag and one infantry down. So we kill one light. And they push back. Now, I pushed them back here, as you can see. I just moved them off the hill. Uh, the Portuguese do have the option to move forward. But the problem is that I don't think that'd be very good for them because they then are like there's a lot here to attack them oh here let me move back yeah see they now have a lot going against them so i think what they'll do is stay there so that was that might be what we got to do is try to get the british up here yeah get them get them up the hills get them up the hills and right into the defenders I have a lot of Portuguese over there too, so that might be what we got to do. All right, well, we're going to come right back with the uh, British. All right, one of those moments came up where I got distracted by something, had to come back. I think we had left off the Portuguese here, had made a push up and kicked some French line, light, actually good, light infantry off. And uh, so now it's the French. Now I'm looking here, line example, line of sight examples in the book would indicate to me that if I could activate the light here, they could shoot a line uh, right, right past this hill. And I think they're a legitimate target from the light infantry. So that might come up. Let's see what we got here. 
I have assault right flank, right, center, center, center. So I got nothing for the left. Everything's for the right. Okay, cool. So we'll come back and look over here at my right side options. Uh, I do have assault, which is order a number of units or leaders on the right flank equal to command. Well, here's the thing. I got nobody on the right flank either. So I'm stuck with center probe. I believe I can discard cards, but of course that's one of those minutia rules I'll have to look up and see if I can do. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just do a probe center. I've got some center probes. I mean, I could, if I wanted to, move some things left, right. That way I could get some left, right cards and put them to use. But we'll go with center. So center, I still got my, my light. And they can shoot two, but they can't reach here. One, two, three, one, two. Everything's like three away still. Um, so I'm going to do a probe center. You see, they don't have line of sight down to the light. They could move over and then initiate. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So I'm going to move them here. They shift one. And that way they can do melee against them. Then, of course, we're going to have the handy-dandy French foot artillery. Um, they're going to fire into the light, but there is a nice terrain boost, so they might not be able to. Artillery gets a minus one shooting into the woods, looks like. All right, well, that's going to be one die because at that range, the French foot gets to roll two dice. For the artillery. I just want to double check. Foot artillery, looking at my cool, I love this chart. I'm sure it's no different than the other chart, but it just it's all on one page. It's really cool. So foot artillery. Yeah. 432. Subtract one for woods. So that's just gonna be one one dice roll here. They got a saber. And sabers don't do anything on shots into the woods. Sabers just work on melee that we're going to do here. So we're going to get four, four dice. I don't think we get a bonus downhill. Uh, battle effects down zero. Yeah, right, so it's no big deal going down. Um, hill to hill does have a note though. Battle from hill to hill has no effect on melee, only ranged fires effect. Oh, interesting. So hill to hill shooting is one thing. All right, so they're going to get four dice because they've got four units. They're going to charge down into the light. They probably, if they win, they're not going to follow up. Uh, but that is two kills. So we're going to reduce the infantry there by two. There was no flags, so I guess they're going to hold their ground. Very brave, very brave of them. And then that would be the end of the French. And they're going to draw one to replace, which is attack right flank. All right, lots of stuff on the right. Well, I do have a cavalry that I could swing out there if I wanted to. But that's about all I've got on the right-hand side. Most of this is just dead center. Well, I can see why some people might get frustrated with this game. But, yeah, I might just have to um, discard cards here and see if I can get a, a lot more center. Okay, so the British, they're going to get probe right flank which is good because since I'm facing it their right flank has a whole bunch of Portuguese units ready to go uh, and that's fantastic so what we'll do is follow in behind move two and no shooting and then I've got more infantry I'm gonna move up one two so I can move in there stop that's the last movement they had anyway so that is two probes for the British right. So the allies are moving up. Then we come back. I did have another center probe. So that's two more. So the French will continue their um, shooting efforts, which they've done phenomenally well. Uh, the British I've tried to push. It just seems a little bit stalled and hesitant. But the British, um, I mean the French, are doing really good. So this time instead of light, I've just got line, they're going to go ahead and try to wipe out that light unit. So it's four and they're going to roll four dice and it's just infantry hits. 
Oops. Uh, they did get a flag. So no, no, no kills. That's good. The unit's still there. But they are going to fall back one. All right. Uh, that could have gone a lot worse. Still, nobody has gotten any battle flags out of this yet. Okay, so that was one unit. I guess I should have activated the other one. Um, I don't know how important it is. I would have to go back and read the rules again just to make sure, like, can, do I have to declare who, like, all my actives now, or can I, like, activate one? I guess I could just pause and look at it real quick. That way you're learning with me, for those who don't know. All right, just from what I saw, it looks like you can go ahead. It says you just um, choose in sequential order, but I didn't see it say that you have to um, designate them before they act. So I almost get the impression it's okay to have one unit act, see the results, and then pick your next one. And that's how I'll, that's how I'll play it. So we'll go ahead and start with the line, which I think they did roll. And then I'll go ahead and pick uh, the artillery again. The French artillery is going to shoot up into the British in the woods, which is still, it's just one die, but you know, every potential hit is something, especially when you score one infantry hit. So that is one light that we will take out. Thank you. Heavy casualties. Had to take another drink. Okay, so I'm going to replace that card. Now, I did look too. I didn't see anything about a specific draw or replace phase if you're unhappy with the cards you have. So I'm almost getting the impression that you just draw a card. You have your cards. If you don't like a card, you just have to play it. And you don't activate anything because it says you can play a card not activate. And then just draw a replacement card. So if you have a specific page number or rule reference that says you can discard and exchange cards. That'd be great, because my my search skills apparently aren't that good when trying to find something specific. Okay, we're gonna come back to the British, and they have a coordinated advance. Uh, one on each flank and two in the center. That is perfect. They totally need something like that. So I'm gonna get my little reminder tokens out. Uh, so we're going to completely advance those line units so I'll put that they moved and this time I think what we'll do I think I'm gonna move this foot unit so they're not gonna shoot this time because they can't move and shoot uh, let's see here they're being shot by artillery so that's not good I gotta move what I could do is have them mm, I wonder if I should just have these light guys charge up into melee that might be what can melee what can they do because I think they can shoot right light infantry can move one and fire or move two and not they could come up and attack their light. This line could move too. So what I'll do is I'll have them... I think I'll have them... We're going to be bold here. We're going to move one here. And let's go ahead... I think you do your move first. All your moves. And then the attacks, right? So... Move with them, those two center. Oh, here it is, you missed it. I moved them out of the woods. So I just moved them out of the woods here and then just one hex forward so they can shoot at that light unit. Ooh, ooh, here, I better move them here. I'll tell you why, I, th I think here's gonna be spot because if I move these guys, one, two, because again, that's movement. Just a reminder that this guy's did something. Then what's going to happen is um, they'll be able to shoot because they're going to bypass their hex, get some hits, and then they will be able to do their melee assault at the end. And hopefully that will be a, a smaller group. We're going to try and whittle them down a bit. So we're now trying to push up with the allied forces. So we're going to check the Portuguese. 
Portuguese are going to roll four dice, minus one because it's uphill. So we're going to grab three dice. And they roll three hits. Wowzer. Okay. That's, that's what they were looking for. And then the French get their one, one back. So they're one retaliatory. It's a saber, uh, so that is a hit. Well, that's very lucky for them. Good exchange, according to the allies. Um, yeah, as much as I like, I hate to see anybody die, but uh, I think that was a good exchange, right? Because I, I think they said the British won this. It was a delaying action, so maybe so. I may have to attach a leader to this infantry and move them up. We might do that. So I'll have to use one of these bicorn orders and move him over. Attach him to somebody. Give them some, some staying power. They already have an attached leader. I just feels so bad moving cavalry out, but um, so far the flanks are holding. Okay, so that British unit went. I'll go ahead and take their activation marker off so I know they're done. The artillery moved, so they're not going to fire, so they're done, done. And that light, yeah, those are light. They moved. They're going to roll uh, five dice. Oh, yeah, they would have rolled six dice if they hadn't lost somebody. But they have four plus one. And they're going to shoot at, ooh. Well, now it's tough. Do I want them to shoot at artillery or at the light? I think what I'll do, I'm going to have them shoot the artillery. We can take the artillery. Artillery is annoying. So let's let's spend a turn shooting at their artillery. So we're going to roll five dice and see if we can hit the artillery. I've got five dice here. Here we go, artillery. You can do it. A two one artillery and two flags. So we're going to go ahead and hit the one loss. And that actually works out pretty good for them. One, two. So the artillery isn't quite isn't wiped out, but it's going to take them a while to move back and move up, and then they're less effective. Well, actually, with two, the charts tell me they're still just as effective. So we'll need to score one more hit on them. Okay, so that that group is done. And then we've got line British. It's actually kind of exciting here. Okay, they, they're attacking uphill. They only get three dice. Only three. Well, all right. It is what it is, right? Two flags. Okay. I would say that's still still a bit of a victory. If we get if we push up the hill in a way, we then have advantage, right? Because then we we get to shoot down, and the enemy gets less dice. So that might not be a bad push for the British, uh, but that's two retreats. One, two, and they do have the option to move up. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that, but I think if you're going to be brave, go big or go home, we'll go ahead and advance up the hill. And I would say that was the turn the British were looking for. They still got some stuff in reserve that they got to move up but I think that puts them in a better position. All right, so the French are looking at this. They can scout center, right flank. I have cavalry in the right flank, but I don't think they want to try and attack um, infantry in the woods. Like I'm just kind of looking at some stuff we have, and I don't think they want to go up against the woods. They're here. Uh, this is all center, uh, but that's a very strong position. Uh, all of this stuff is actually in a very good spot to try and repulse them from the hill. So maybe moving up onto the hill wasn't the best idea. So we're going to do scout center. That's all I have right now with a center to it, but it's one unit. Um, I think we'll go ahead and try right here. This group is going to go ahead and attack up here. Let's see if we can knock them back off the hill. Um, so it's going to be in melee. So that's going to be four dice minus one. See, that's what the British were hoping 
was you know being up on the hill that gives them slightly better defense we do roll one casualty so that's not as good as the French would hope for but um, that's what they're getting now the British get to retaliate and they've got three dice there as well uh, so now if they score any casualties they could get a leader hit it is it's there's going to be a check so first of all we are in a bit of a conundrum here um, we have a lot of stuff in traffic so first of all we lose one I'm gonna check for the leader casualty right now and then we'll see because I think it says if you can't retreat uh, they only have to retreat one but the retreat route is blocked off they can't move through this light cavalry or they can't end in the same hex because they only have to retreat one so from my remembering of the rules as I knock all of this down if you can't retreat then you take a f another casualty for each um, spot that you can't retreat however that does not trigger an additional leader check I'm only going to make one roll based on the initial attack by the British so we've got two now if you roll two sabers then the leader's dead all right and they're fine leader is good all right so just you know if we did that right the French attacked up the British counterattacked um, caused a retreat they couldn't retreat because their retreat has been kind of blocked off block get it <laughs> so I guess what I need to do is move some guys out of the way here if I get another which I've got some right flank action I'm gonna have to move the the um, cavalry that way I can account for any more retreats or pushbacks just so people can can move back so hey just like these other games I play um, you don't always understand the importance of maneuvering and leaving gaps so people can do retreats until you see it and then you're like hmm yeah I might want to just move people out of the way so if I'm looking over here for instance I still have some retreat spots but I got a bit of a traffic jam here because I don't think you can maybe I can retreat sideways but then in a way that's going towards another unit so I think um, I think they had to suffer some casualties well anyway the French draw back a recon in force which will allow me one action in each each flank so we're gonna try that or in each um, aisle column section alright cool alright British British go and they get assault center order a number of units or leaders in the center equal to command the number of cards held in your hand including this card well um, the scenario is six for the British so the British can get six units here in the center to do something uh, which I think is okay because um, we're going to fire with him because he he's on the center there he can go either either way um, and then we'll we're gonna move this guy because now he can shoot at something so we're gonna do all the movement first I think we'll move the line back up yep because again they can shoot so the idea is we want to try and uh, clear the hilltops there and they're going to shoot so that's four six total for the British and this guy now if nothing else they need to help move up to reinforce and they need to continue the assault downward uh, which would be right here they're going to go ahead and continue continue shooting down oh it's going to get scary for the for the french here in just a moment okay oh wait a minute i totally forgot to do something oh because they're not the center so he's center and he's going to shoot up um shooting i i don't think i was deducting it says here so i may have been making a mistake on some of these earlier shots 
by not properly reducing all of the shots uphill by one. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but since that's one, I don't think you can roll less than one die. I would have to look in the rules, but I'm gonna make an on-the-spot decision and say that, you know, it's he's gonna shoot uphill, he loses a die, but I'm gonna give him at least one die. Um, and I'm talking about right here, and then shooting uphill at this line unit. Uh, so it's still just going to be one die. And let's see what happens here. Shake it up. Ugh. Nope. That's a miss. So I'll take it off. Uh, next in line, without swinging the camera around, there was a line infantry, uh, British line infantry I brought up. So it's going to do the same thing. We're just going to roll one die, shooting uphill, which is a saber. Uh, so nope. Not good. And then we're going to check the center here. And again, since they're shooting uphill, yeah, I think earlier I was when I was shooting, I don't know if I've had the British shoot along that hilltop too much. I think most of these assaults have been uphill, and I was reducing it by one. So we're going to have this center group go ahead and shoot. But again, that's going to be one die, because they've only got one line with them. So that might not work out very good. Oh. Uh, you know what? Did I move them? I think I only moved them one, but they actually need to move. Oh, they're not in a good spot. So I think what I'll do is I'll move them here and they can't shoot anything. So they're going to get ready to move up the hill. So I'll just take that off. Yeah, I, yeah, I just moved them. Yeah, okay, that might be going back and changing history a little bit. But let's go ahead and roll this one die to see if we get any casualties here. So we got our one die. Uh, it's a flag. So, yeah, without an attached leader. Now, it does say this, and this actually might work out for the French. I can retreat back into a leader that doesn't have anything attached, and he's now attached. And now they have a full strength line unit with an attached leader, which could have helped prevent that loss of a flag, because that would ignore the first flag, but they didn't. Uh, but what that means is that artillery back there has nothing to shoot at, so I'll say they're done now, all the maneuvering. But now what we have left is on the hill, shooting down into that leader spot. So that's three dice, no penalty for shooting down. Here we go, move the camera around. We get, um, well that's two kills actually, and a retreat. Since you have an attached leader, you could go ahead and say that you ignore that flag, but we have to remove two. Okay, now, just so you know, uh, again, without swinging the camera everywhere, that's two French lines that are taken out, and then we're gonna go ahead and roll to see if the leader is taken. Uh, I think that there was something about that. If they're in their uh, hex by themselves, it might just be roll one die. But let me double check on that. All right. Yeah, there's a few rules in there about uh, what you do there with an attached leader, leader whose unit is eliminated. And it does say you roll one. That's the first thing we'll check. So we're going to roll one die. And no, nope, even though it's a cavalry, it says you got to roll a saber. So he's fine. However, it did say that because his unit was eliminated, he is going to have to retreat up to three hexes. And again, I don't think that's too bad because what I'll do is I'll just move and attach. So now he'll be with this light infantry. And I would say the British successfully held the hill that particular time. Uh, they might not get to stay so lucky. Uh, okay, that was the British. All right. Well, it looks like the British... I, I was kind of worried at first, but I think now the British are gaining some momentum. Um, the French are going to play their recon in force, which will allow them one activation. And what I have over here, I believe I can shoot along. I might... I might want to check. I 
I have a habit of thinking something and then the more I think about it I'm like are you sure you can shoot along this side I think the line of sight example showed you could but I'm gonna double check um actually it might be blocked so I'm looking at this chart and it looks like everything along you know the opposite side of that is kind of blocked so it looks like this would be out of line of sight but I'm on the hill um, yeah see I'm on the other side of that hill oh no no that one's good that one's good I can hit that I think it's saying that if I went back one more that would be out of line of sight but this is in line of sight so yeah that makes sense never mind see that's one of those starting to over analyze things so that's light infantry they get four shots so we're gonna go ahead and roll four dice and they don't get to be shot back oh well I should do movement first um, I'll go ahead and roll their attack now hmm Technically, I guess I'm supposed to declare all the activations and moves, and then we go back and shoot and fire. I think what I'll do, I'm going to move uh, for the center. I get one in the center. We'll go ahead and move the leader up. That way, if they get a flag, they can, you know, stop one flag. But this will let them shoot at somebody, and they'll probably score a kill. Oh, which, by the way, since that was an eliminated unit, that is one British victory flag. I'm going to stick that over here. So that's one one battle flag for the British. Okay, so that's uh, one on the right or one on my left that will do something. Put a reminder marker. And then we're going to have they moved up so they can shoot. And then over here on the right, I do have the light infantry. We're going to go ahead and just have them move. Uh, but that puts them in line of set. So we'll move back one. That way they are securely on the right hand side and I got some maneuver room to retreat if I have to. Uh, it might not be the smartest but it's kind of what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to roll here. They get four dice because that's light infantry. They must have some really nice rifles they, they got. So I got four dice. Roll. Yeah, it's one, one line hit. Alright, now they're getting pushed back. And then they're going to go back to one, two. They'll go right into the woods. All right. So that's good job. You held the line. And then here they're going to shoot four dice down into the line unit with the leader. Okay. So that could be bad. We'll have to get some retaliatory shots there on the British turn. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yep. The cavalry. Nope. So all misses there. That happens. That happens. Okay, that's the French. They're done. And so we'll get a card here for them. And they get a flank attack. Two on each flank. We can work that. British. British get scout right flank. So that would be over here since I'm reversing it. Um, yeah, let's bring up some friendly firepower. Well, I can get one shot with the light. He's going to roll two dice. Oh, yeah, there we go. When the light unit is shooting uphill, they get to add a die. But you got to subtract one anyway for shooting uphill. So it's still a minimum of one. But they could shoot because they are on that line. Or, better yet, we're going to bring these guys up. One two now it's only they can't shoot but we've brought some more more target selection there some more options they're out of range of the light they're in range of the line but we can do some shooting back okay that was the British French they're gonna do a flank attack which has got two each two in the left and right flanks we have stuff for that. In fact, we were just talking about that. This guy is in that flank, and so is he. 
uh, he can make a decision to either move, move and shoot, put himself out in the open, lose that uphill defense, or because if I activate him and don't move him, then it's kind of no good. You know what I might do instead of this light? We're going to move them up one. We're going to bring some more rifles up onto the hill. That's what we're going to do. Uh, in fact, we'll bring more rifles onto the hill and still have him shoot. So we're going to mark them for... Oh, no, that's that's the flanks. Dang it. Never mind. So we're going to go, we're going to go brave and move out here get shooting for them and then the French uh, all well, we have is him and like I said I don't want to attack the woods alright that seemed like the best option at the time so let's do some shooting um, they're gonna roll four dice because they get one for being light they're gonna shoot straight ahead into that Portuguese line unit let's see what happens Oh, devastating. That is a devastating blow to the Portuguese, and they got to fall back. Still have not earned any battle flags, but they have definitely put a soul-crushing stomp onto the allied forces. Okay, so we'll take their activation marker off. And that leaves me with my one light unit. He's going to roll two dice to shoot down at that light unit. Just two dice, but the dice have been very kind. The dice have gone back and forth. And that's two retreats. That light unit. Okay, the light unit says we're out. Now, I don't think the woods... Um, the woods rules, if you're moving, if you move into it, you stop. But I think on the retreat, you keep going back. And again, I, I just feel lazy. I don't want to look in the rule book. But I believe they still get pushed back too, regardless of what they have. Uh, you know, it's yeah. I think that's a thing. They would just get pushed back through the woods. All right, so there you go. Good job. That was some good, um, good for the French that time. So they draw a replacement card and they picked up a probe right flank. So yeah, we're gonna have to trade out a card here or there so we can get something better. All right, British, Assault Center, that would be six, including that card, because they get a hand of six. Um, so we can move the light back up. Now, he can move one and shoot, but that's out of range. Uh, and I don't want to move them back up necessarily yet. Okay, so we'll leave that there. This guy will shoot. This guy will... What will they do? Ah, goodness gracious. Okay, I'm going to move you. Okay, that's two. I move the other foot artillery up here. So that's two activations. This line unit can fire they can fire that's two okay looking out so I got six so what are we gonna do here they're gonna do something now do they need to move I don't think so they're gonna shoot down now this light can move they're gonna move uphill so they're now uphill and then they'll shoot so one, two, three, four, five. And that foot artillery cannot move and shoot. See this foot artillery over here has line of sight to this hill if we don't push them off. So we might just stay put there. Okay, well let's do some shooting. I'm going to have that line unit shoot one die up and try to get you know what, we're going to put, mm, you know what, I think this foot artillery does not have line of sight because he's blocking it. See, I think you would have line of sight here, but I don't think you get line of sight here because he's blocking. 
just the way it plays out, I might actually have to push him up. So I think what I'll do, instead of just going straight to firing, because if I move him here, he's going to have combined arms. The artillery will get to shoot, and then he'll get to do something. And he can still shoot. So he's going to roll t one die up, up the hill. Uh, nothing. I probably should have had him advance too. But... Okay, let me... I was reading this combined arms, but let me just double check and see if it's, you know, if they each get to attack or if it's uh, just one dice roll fest. Let me double check. All right, so this is where I forgot originally what I was looking for, but what I was looking for and, and ended up trying to find was um, when you get your dice... Re oh, I remember. I was doing combined arms. I'll show you here in a second. Um, I was looking for combined arms, which I found, which is basically what I thought. You're going to take the number of dice you get from this assault here because uh, it's a melee and then add the dice from the cannon shot one two three well it's a range of four. Oh wait they moved this one's shooting one two three so that's two dice so I'm gonna add one dice for them because they're attacking uphill at two dice now it says though that if you were um, gonna have zero dice the artillery would still attack so then that got me thinking oh wait a minute so if I have reductions that would put me at zero dice, I guess there's not a minimum of one. So I was looking in the rule book to see if there was a minimum number of dice, and it just says that you figure out how many dice you get for attacking based on the number of troops you have, then you apply the terrain reductions, but there's nothing that says that, yeah, you could get stuck with zero dice. So I, I'm thinking I'll need your experience, team, to let me know um, is it possible to get zero dice and then there's no attack? I like the minimum of one. If you're going to go to all the effort of, you know, getting ready for a melee attack or something, should you get at least one dice out of it? Uh, but that could be wrong. You may just set yourself up for failure sending one block to assault uphill. And then you would know better as a general not to do that in the future. So, yeah, just let me know. Is it possible to get stuck with zero dice, like a half, and it, you just can't? Uh, but in this case, we're going to get one for them attacking uphill and then two for the artillery to support. So that's three dice coming in here. Okay, so all of that just to find out that, yeah, I'm still cheating on games. But hopefully you all will help me learn that. So they get one infantry and a retreat. Well, okay, so the reason why that's not terrible is because one, that does whittle them down. Oh, wait. Oh, they get to ignore the first flag, so they stay on the hill. But we get to roll two dice now to see if the leader goes down. So they were about to retreat, but the leader lets them absorb one flag. Now if I roll two sabers, he's gone. So actually, that benefited the French greatly, because now they're going to roll three dice back. Ooh, this could go bad now. Um, yeah, it's one casualty so I'll take the one one British guy off uh, they absorb the first flag because they have an attached leader and we're gonna roll two dice if I get two sabers that leader is dead nope so they're gonna stay and fight eh, one to one exchange it, I'd say the French still benefited from that but now we're gonna shoot down into this group maybe we can put some harm there so this flank, well, we'll see what happens. So before I say this flank is collapsing, let's see if we score. So these are line troops. They're going to get three dice. And then this is four light, and they're going to get five dice. So I'm going to take you to the dice tray here. And we're just going to roll all of that before I swing the camera back. So first is three for the line. Okay, that's one hit. Um, they do absorb the first, oh, that's good because that's a light. They get a bonus to attack. Uh, but they will take a loss. The flag is absorbed by the leader. And now we're going to roll two dice to see if there is a leader casualty. So rolling two flat or rolling two sabers doesn't seem like that happens too often. Yeah, so the leader's fine. 
Then it's the light infantry shooting down at that same group. So they're going to roll five dice. So they're bringing some firepower. And I was reading, again, some of the <coughs> excuse me, minutia details. So light, light guard, and I think as I said, one other light unit essentially. They can move their two hexes, but then they can't engage in melee. So this group uh, moved one. I think they moved one. Did they move one? <gasps> I forgot if they moved two. I think they moved two to occupy the hill. I don't think they can fire this turn. I think I moved them up onto the hill. If I could rewind the camera and go back and verify that, I would. But I think that light group, I think I moved them out of the woods. I think I moved them out of the woods and up onto that hill so they could fire down. So since I moved them too, they can't shoot. So I think we're done because that artillery moved. They're all, I think they're done. I may have messed that up. Uh, once this is uploaded to YouTube, it'll be really easy just to hit that rewind button a few times and check. However, at this moment, it's not easy at all. All right, so I'm looking at the video card and it says this video card is getting full. Um, that means I must have a lot of junk on here. So what we'll do is, that was the British. Yeah, well, let's, let's end it here. I'm going to put a little reminder here that I'm, we're starting with the British, so I'm gonna, or with the French. So I'm gonna leave the French play aid up. All right, great. Hey, thanks for watching. If you watched all this, I appreciate it. I hope that uh, you're enjoying this. It's kind of fun. The camera is not as in the way as I thought it would be. So this gives me a chance to show the, the blocks as we play. And yes, this is Commands and Colors Napoleonic's Light. This is me learning the game, trying out some of the basic rules. There's not a basic rule section and advanced rules. This is me just purposefully cutting out some of the minutia and some of the cards so I can just kind of focus on learning like the sequence. And then as I play more, I can add more rules to it. So again, this is just a, a learning opportunity for myself. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have some additional tips and things like that, even in this basic setup I've got, please let me know what mistakes you've seen. And if you can, just point me to a timestamp. You don't have to put the timestamp where I can click and, and go there. I, you don't have to do that. If you know how to do that, great. But if you just want to type out the time, so if you say, oh, at you know 15 minutes, you should have done this, that's fine, because then I can jump to that segment of the video and see what I did wrong or what I could do differently. Uh, that would be appreciated. Otherwise, we'll leave it like this. I want to say the British are doing good and they're advancing, but I don't know if they're really doing good yet. So this is just a final look at what we have. Um, I might not be utilizing the the cavalry as much as I could. I'm, I might have to, but this is where we're at. Uh, we lost a little artillery. We lost, well this, yeah, the, the French light only get four blocks. So we lost a block there. They lost a block, they've lost a block. I want to say it's been a pretty equal exchange. I should tidy up the losses here, but I still think there's a lot more British loss. I don't know, it's starting to even out. I see a lot of blue blocks, but I think there's more red and Portuguese, uh, but the British are still advancing. So the French are fighting their delaying action, but the, um, the Allies are coming, slowly but surely. I do see a very strong left flank for the French and a very weak weak flank there for the British but a pretty good pretty good flank over here I still got stuff coming up so we'll see how it goes well I appreciate you watching I, although I will say this it's getting close to a French I think the French have a little bit better advantage because there's a lot more single block units on the board for the British. So if the French can hold out, it's quite possible they might score a victory because yeah, we've got quite a few single blocks there, but we'll find out when we come back. Uh, and then hopefully I'll clear this video card off and we'll have some more room to play with. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll should have attached a leader. I just left the leader back there. I should have put him with some infantry. 
Ah, uh, yeah, I got nothing for you. I should have totally put him on someone. I think, I think when I get one of those flank orders or something like that, I'll I'll have him come up. But I should not have left him back there. That was a wasted leader opportunity, because it did make a difference up here. That unit, that unit should have retreated. They they had opportunities to retreat, but their leadership kept them in place to fight. So, leaders are important. Hard to kill. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks again for watching. Bye.